Hi, we're back again with our Queen of Diamonds. Last time we were together, we talked about getting these sashing pieces on all the way around our block. You can, uh, you can do it one side, then the next, then all the way around, or you can put opposite sides on and then the opposite sides the other way. So it's up to you. When you get them on, you, you're gonna have a little hanging out that end and you can just lay that down and trim it off, just like that. So you've got a great corner to start working on our borders. Now the borders, if you have your um, templates, if you're doing it paper pieced by hand, you have your templates, you can cut these out. Otherwise you're going to be cutting three inch strips for the sashing and you're going to out of the three inch strip for the cornerstones. I'm going to show you how to cut a cornerstone. On your ruler, you're going to find, well, if you've got a ruler that has one, it's very helpful, um, a 60 degree on it. Uh, and the new Tulas have the 60 degree on them, so that's going to be fun. Um, so I'm going to lay this down. And if you look at the book, when this is laid down, this is on top of it, and it's showing you where you could see that 60 degree angle. But what we're gonna do is show you how you would cut it, not just look at it. So that's my 60 degree right here. And that's how the book shows it. But I'm gonna go like this, line it up on the side. I'm gonna cut it off. So this is the 60 degree line, straight down the side. I thought I was cutting. Okay, there. Now to do the next one, flip my ruler over. I'm kind of cutting from the sideways. So my 60 degree is here. I've got it straight on the three inch there. And then I have a cornerstone. Edge of my fairy flake sashing border fabric cut on the angle. And I am going to sew my cornerstone onto it, okay? Just with a quarter inch. So we are now going to a quarter inch. And then I'm going to take my block and I'm gonna take my other piece that I cut. So I have two pieces, two sets of sashing pieces. And I'm gonna put this So we've got this ready, laid down the length of that, and we're gonna to go to the machine, if I can hold my fabric, we're gonna to go to the machine and sew that on. At the top, I'm gonna to leave a quarter inch because I want to go in at a quarter inch. the pieces together, you're going to want to do an overlap of a quarter inch there and a quarter inch here. So your dog ears will make your seams match up. And we have one side sewn together with the cornerstone on it. Going to match those up right there at this point. That point right there with that same spot underneath right there. So I'm gonna match that Put a pin in, and then I'm going to sew this side on.
open that up and look. Match just great right there. We're going to press this seam so you can see it nice and flat. And remember, these were quarter inch seams. And there we go. We've got the cornerstone. Now we have extras hanging off the end and we're going to trim those off at a 60 degree. But the way we're gonna do that is by just, I'm gonna tell you about this ruler in a minute. I'm gonna show you right now. Right there and trim that off. And you can do that with any straight edge ruler. This ruler is really fun. It's a 60 degree ruler from Creative Grids and you can buy it on pinkdoor.com. And it's really nice to be able to lay, and as you look at this, you're gonna see that there's a little trimming that needs to be done on my block, right there, to get it exactly straight. So, you can see that just a little bit. And so this really is helpful to get your cornerstones and your sashing all straight. I can't do it that way. I'll do it this way. Don't ever do it backwards. Okay. So this was helpful to do the center point and also helpful to cut all of the edges on the other side straight. And so now your blocks will have the sashing and the cornerstones on one side and they will all start fitting together. So you need to think about that when you've got the ones that are just a half of it, that they don't have these because they are attaching to the ones that already have this on it. Okay, so we're here to talk about your smaller and edge blocks today. So once you get all those done, you're gonna take the papers out of these just like we've talked about before. Now this one is a little funny just because these are small pieces of paper in there. But once you pull those out, your seams will open up and you'll have no issue. So just lay all of your seams out so that you, basically what we're doing is we're gonna cut the right part of this off using a 3 8 inch seam allowance so that you've got a seam um, for when you go to put all the rest of these together. So this next block in the magic of television, we've taken the papers out of this one. This is the queen of ween um, version. So that's why these fabrics are different. But I really like these rulers. Don't feel like you have to go out and buy a special ruler for all of these different things. Like try to make what you have work. But these creative grids, these are called the itty bitty eighth because they're eighth inch marks that go all the way down on this ruler. So I really prefer this, especially when I'm cutting long blocks. They have these in various different sizes and I'm sure other companies make them, but I just happen to have this one on hand. So you can see here, each one of these represents an eighth. And so I've got this initial sashing piece on. So I'm gonna cut it just so it's not so long and overhanging to be three eighths of an inch longer than that, just so I've got something to work with. And then the same thing up here, at that same angle, I'm just lining it up with these pieces. So once you've got that, you've got your overall block here. I don't wanna do this upside down so that it's right side up for you guys because I don't wanna mess this up. But what's basically gonna happen is I'm gonna take my three eighths inch line and line it up with the top point of that block all the way down through the center of all these points of these blocks. They should all line up, give or take. And if they don't, don't stress. This is gonna be on the edge of the quilt. You're gonna be fine. So don't even worry about it. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim off this block to have 3 eighths of an inch from these points. So you can see some of these were a little shorter because we did them half or you know half blocks here rather than full blocks. Don't stress about this. What's going to happen is this point is going to be the edge of your quilt right here. And so 
Your binding is going to cover a lot of that, so don't stress out about that. Um, and then you're just going to do the same thing for your other corner blocks. But just be careful. I prefer to wait until the very end of this to line all these up. And if you want to wait to trim the entire thing, just so that the whole thing is completely square when you put your other blocks in it, that's also a way to do that, just so that you're sure that nothing has shifted and you're not losing seam allowance. So I hope that helps with your corner pieces. Um, and then just to, we're gonna go back over to our quilt, so we'll pick up in just a second. But one thing I did wanna mention is that for your cornerstones on these half blocks, the cornerstones don't actually touch these, they're gonna touch this point. So I'll show you that in the quilt in just one moment and we'll kind of go over how to lay these out. Okay, last step. So when you're going to put all this together, it really, really helps visually, at least for me, to lay this on a floor so that you can put all the pieces together and figure out how these longer sort of drop shadow rows are gonna to go together. Or if you've got a design wall, that's great too. That way you can place it all and it just helps visually to go, okay, this one already has a cornerstone and or the sashing, the cornerstone and the other sashing, what we called sort of a, a shadow block. So this one just needs this shadow block on it. And then this is going to attach to all those. Basically those are done in rows, as you can see with the pattern. But there was a little bit of confusion with the side pieces and where those go on. So you'll see, you don't actually see the point of this. The point of this is actually sitting out here at the edge of your quilt. So this is why it helps to put all the pieces together, including these. So this drop shadow on this block is going to get the whole, let's call it shadow block piece. So it's gonna get this sashing, this sashing, and this cornerstone, and you're gonna attach this piece to this, and then you'll have the leftover that you can trim at the end. And that's why I mentioned it's helpful to put all of these together and then trim your edges before trimming the actual blocks down. If there's a way that works better for you, I encourage you to use that, but this is just the way that we did it. So I do just wanna thank you from the bottom of our hearts here at Pink Door for being a part of this with us. Um, it's been such a joy and pleasure to see so many people learning to love English paper piecing or falling even more in love with it. So we thank you for joining us and please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. This Facebook group is going to live on for quite some time. I know that English paper piecing, this is heavy, um, takes some time and so it will remain there, but we thank you for joining us and for being a part of this.